All right, Cage from Cubepunks here, and you know, I make a lot of character models for the games that I develop, and throughout all the models I've created, I use three add-ons in practically every single one I've made. And the thing is, these add-ons, while they have some popularity, these aren't ones that are exactly the most obvious surface level ones, and you're, you're not going to realize that they exist immediately if you're a beginner. I personally had to do some digging and looking around for, you know, a couple of weeks or so to find them, as well as also having some trial and error work you know, cost a little bit of dollars. While Blunder itself is free, some of the add-ons that are developed by the community, you know, cost a bit of money, and some of them can cost a pretty penny. So let's start off with the one free one, Outline Helper from Feline Entity. So this add-on basically speeds up the backface culling uh, method for making outlines in a 3D model. So it's a matter of a couple clicks rather than a longer process. So if you take the model and then you take it over to looking closer at what the geometry looks like, you'll see the little black lines around there. What's going on is that there's a rendering effect going on with these black lines where it's actually a solidified shell around the 3D mesh itself. However, when you have backface culling on, which makes the polygons only visible from one direction, it becomes basically, well, see-through. So you can see the, uh, the inside filling there, but because there's no filling in the little bits of edges here, the extra gap space ends up looking like a illustrated outline. It's a weird optical illusion, but the easiest way to keep it straight in your head is just that you're creating a shell around the model. This is the face with the shell on, and this is what it looks like when the shell is off. What this add-on does is that it just simplifies everything that you would need to do for this process into a little pop-up menu here. If you need to add an outline, just press this button, and you can uh, set that outline like this, and you can just scale it with the slider. If you have an outline already on, but you want to adjust it, you can go over here and you can make it you know, thicker and smaller. And if you ultimately decide that the outline is not good, you can press a button and remove it. You can also get more granular with Outline Helper. If you want to adjust the individual vertex's varied uh, thickness, you can do it and work through with it to get uh, like a more finer point, like say on the nose here. That can be really helpful with more detailed anime style models. However, for something a little bit more simple, more chibi, more cartoon, usually a consistent line thickness is just good enough. The add-on is doing is just that it's adding on a solidify modifier right here. It's creating a vertex group so it knows which vertices need to have the modifier applied to it, which is useful for, again, controlling that line thickness at specific points. And it also automatically creates that outline material with backface cooling enabled. What's cool is you can also control the outline color through the material property as well. So overall, it just gives you everything you want to work with when doing the specific method of making black outlines on a 3D model. Now, the next essential tool is Exocide's Quad Remesher tool. Now, if you've done any modeling, you will know that one of the parts of the process that's not the most fun is topology. Now, it's one challenge to make sure your model has the correct form. However, it's an entirely different challenge to make sure that the topology, the squares, the tries, the polygons are working in the correct patterns that won't create other issues for you down the road when you're d doing other parts of the 3D process. As you see right here, instead of this just being like a flat surface, these are a bunch of triangles going to a single set point. That's not good topology. What you want your topology is maybe looking a little bit more close to this, or maybe something close to this. What Exercise Quad Remesher add-on does is that this is an automated process. A lot of times getting this to look more like this might be something that's done manually. And there are times where you want to get it done manually. And when we talk about those manual use cases, I have a tool for that. However, However, what I find is that the automated process gets 80% of the work done and anything that could be uh, made stronger is just simple manual adjustment that takes no more than 30 minutes. In the case of this 3D sculpt that I was working on, I actually have done remeshing on this body through using the quad remesher add-on. And as you see here, like on her arms, this is good, you know, the edge flow, but it would it looked nothing like that before I used Quad Remesher. Her body was originally sculpted out of a bunch of different cubes and such. It was originally this, and then I merged the primitive shapes and smoothed them out to be more like this. However, if we try to look at the wireframe, 
you know, this, you know, is a visible wireframe. This is a visible wireframe, but this right here, that is way too dense. That, mm. so you, using the quadro measure add-on as well as some of the settings here, like vertex color, for example, which tells you, Hey, this is where you don't need as many polygons, but here you're going to need to put more polygons here. By doing some trial and error with the settings, as well as also with the vertex coloring, we got a torso whose wireframe looked like this, very dense, no squares, to this, not nearly as dense, and look at that, squares, well, rectangles, but you get it, quads. Quads is the actual term. This polycon is going to be able to deform to rigging a lot easier than that other jumbled mess. However, say I need to get it to be even a lower polycon. If you have decimate and unsubdivide on, you can get it down that way, or you can go to edit mode, highlight the vertices you don't want, and dissolve edges. Retopology is essential if you want to actually have a rig that you can pose. And a lot of other programs, such as ZBrush, have automated remeshing tools. Blender has some built-in ones, but it's not good enough. However, quad remesher from Exocide is. These are the prices, and if you are going to take 3D modeling seriously, this is a very reasonable price for what you're getting. However, let's say we're in a situation where you can't accelerate the process. You have to do it manually, like character faces, for example. I tend to find that exercise quadra measure doesn't work as good there. Well, speed retopa flow, similar to outline helper, is that it takes a lot of the processes, but it bundles them, packages them together. So it makes it a couple clicks rather than you having to click around the program and grab a bunch of modifiers for things. What this does is that it creates a new mesh with the shrink wrap modifier properties and the ability for you to draw a new topology on top of the mesh that curves and wraps over the old mesh. The demo on the store page does a good job at communicating the tools that are set up where they are and when to use them. And again, while the body was able to be automated, the face itself, this mesh right here, I had to go in manually and do this. Those are the tools. And the resources tell you very much where on them, how to use the individual. You click this, you click that, you click this, you click that. Look, it's going to be a little while till I actually probably make an actual tutorial myself. I rather point you towards a reference and somebody giving a better explanation while I get my public speaking skills up a little bit better. The three tools I showed off today are all in the description below. So hopefully that helps you out. And if you want to help me out, go to the Q-Punks website in the description and check out some of the video games that we've made. This one in particular shows 3D models that use that technique that, you know, the, the, the ones that I've been showing you here follow places like, you know, we have a DeviantArt, we have, uh, we have Twitter, we have Twitter, so, uh, we have uh, Newgrounds. Do you remember Newgrounds? Newgrounds is cool. Chances are, if you're watching this video, there's something for you around here. All right, see ya.